kindly rise. Let us pray. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants, for whom Christ, your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Part 1 
liturgy of the world in the first reading we see that jesus was pierced through for our faults this reading is proclaimed in marathi यशियाच्या पुस्तकातून घेतलेले वाचन पहा माझा सेवक सुज्ञतेने वर्तेल तो थोर व उन्नत होईल तो अत्युच्च होईल ज्याप्रमाणे तुला पाहून बहुत चकित झाले त्याचा चेहरा मनुष्यासारखा नव्हता त्याचे स्वरूप मनुष्य जातीसारखे नव्हते इतका तो विद्रूप होता त्याप्रमाणे तो अनेक राष्ट्रास दचकाव्यास लावील राजे त्याला पाहून आपली तोंडे बंद करतील कारण कोणी सांगितल्या नाहीत असल्या गोष्टी ते पाहतील त्यांच्या कानी पडल्या नाहीत अशा गोष्टी त्यांना कळतील आम्ही ऐकलेल्या गोष्टीवर कोणी विश्वास ठेवला आहे का परमेश्वराचा भूस कोणास प्रकट झाला आहे कारण तो त्याच्या पुढे रोप्यासारखा वृक्षभूमीतील अंकुरासारखा वाढला त्याला रूप नव्हते शोभा नव्हती त्याच्याकडे पाहिले तर त्याच्यावर मन बसेल असे त्याच्या ठाई काही नव्हते तुच्छ मानलेला मनुष्याने टाकलेला क्लेशाने वापलेला व व्याधीशी परिचित असलेला तो पुरुष पाहून लोके तोंडे फिरवीत व त्याला तुच्छ लेखित आणि त्याला आम्ही मानले नाही खरोखर आमच्या व्याधी त्याने आपल्यावर घेतल्या आमचे क्लेश त्याने वाहिले तरी त्यास ताडन केलेले देवाने त्यावर प्रहार केलेले व त्याला पिडलेले आम्ही त्याला लेखले खरे पाहिले असता तो आमच्या अपराधामुळे घायल झाला आमच्या दुष्कर्मामुळे तो ठेचला गेला आम्हा शांती देणारी शिक्षा त्यास झाली त्यास बसलेल्या प्रत्येक फटक्याने आम्हा शांती प्राप्त झाली आम्ही सर्वजण मेंढराप्रमाणे बहकून गेलो होतो आम्ही प्रत्येकाने आपापला मार्ग धरला होता अशा आम्हा सर्वांचे पाप परमेश्वराने त्याच्यावर लादले त्याचे हाल हाल केले तरी त्याने ते सोसिले आपले तोंड सुद्धा उघडले नाही वधाव्यास नेणाऱ्या कोकराप्रमाणे लोकर कातरणाऱ्या पुढे गप्प राहणाऱ्या मेंढराप्रमाणे तो गप्प राहिला त्याने आपले तोंड उघडले नाही त्याच्यावर जुलूम करून व खटला चालवून त्याला घेऊन गेले जिवंतच्या भूमीतून त्याला काढले 
आणि माझ्या लोकांच्या पातकामुळे त्याला ताडन करण्यात आले असा त्या पिढीच्या लोकापैकी कोणीतरी विचार केला काय त्याची कबर दुर्जनांच्या कबरेमध्ये नेमली होती आणि तो मेल्यावर धनवंतांची कबर त्याला प्राप्त झाली तथापि त्याने काही अधर्म केला नव्हता त्याच्या मुखात काही कपट नव्हते त्याला ठेचावे असे परमेश्वराच्या मर्जीस आले त्याने त्याला पिडले त्याच्या जीवाचे दोषार्पण झाल्यावर तो संतती पाहील तो दीर्घायू होईल त्याच्या हातून परमेश्वराचा मनोरथ सफल होईल त्याच्या जीवाच्या वेदना सरल्यावर तो त्यांचे फळ पाहून समाधान पावेल तो माझा धर्मशील सेवक आपल्या ज्ञानाने बहुतास निर्दोष ठरवेल त्याच्या अधर्माचा भार तो आपल्यावर घेईल ह्यामुळे मी त्याला थोरा बरोबर विभाग देईल तो बलवाना बरोबर लूट वाटून घेईल कारण आपला प्राण समर्पून तो मृत्यू पावला त्याने आपणास अपराध्यात गणू दिले नाही त्याने बहुतांचे पाप आपल्यावर घेतले व अपराध्यांसाठी मध्यस्थी केली हा प्रभूचा शब्द आहे धन्यवाद For the song, can you join us in singing Hey Bapa Me?
second reading, we see that Jesus learned to obey through suffering and became for all who obey him the source of eternal salvation. This reading is proclaimed in Konkani. Hebrewal Borilla Patrantle was a Baba Baineno Ter Ami Wutsar Town to Bavart Tir Samalia Kitak Amka Asa X Race to Yazar Sargar Gela to Jesu Devatso Put Ani Tokai Amche Astatoye Vishi Panwalai ना तसलो श्रेष्ठ यजक नहीं, अम्चे बरें सर संगति ने कष्ट संकष्ट बगलो तसलो तरी ताने पता केले ना तर गर्जे अंकद जावेला अम का दया अने आधार मिर्चे कतीर अमी दहिरान देवचा कुर्पे सियसना लगी सरिया जेजु या संसरी अस्तना आपना मोर्नांतलो वाटाउं सक्तेले लगी बोब गल अनी दुखा गल प्रार्तना अनी विनेंत्यो करूंक लगलो तचा मनकुला कल्पना कती देवान तची मागणी ऐकली त्याशिवाय तो देवचो पुत तरी अपने ससल्या कष्टा वर्वी विदे पोण किते ते शिकलो अनि संपोर्ण कही चा शिकरा तखा वबार्तस तचे वुतर पादल्या समेस्ता ससनांचा धारण चे कारण तो सालो देवचे उतर देवचे ओढ़ का अनि सांपुत कौसल Thank you. 
Jesus. 
Lord. I have always thought in synagogues and in the temple where all Jews come together. I have said nothing secretly. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, exclaiming, Is that how you want to die? Why do you strike me? And as that sent him out to Caiaphas the high priest, now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They said to him, Aren't you also one of his disciples? Aren't you also If 
my king chamber of this world, my servants would fight that I might not be handed over to the Jews. But my kingship is not from this world. Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You see that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is after he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no crime in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. Would you have me release for you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas! Not this man, but Barabbas! Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers Pleaded a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews! Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him with their hands. Pilate to them. Behold, I am bringing him up to you, that you may know that I find no crime in him. So Jesus came out wearing a crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no crime in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. We have a law, and by that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. But Jesus gave no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, You will not speak to me. Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus Unless it 
had been given from above. Therefore he who delivered me to you as the greater sin. Upon this, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews kept shouting, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement and in Hebrew Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Chief priests and We have no king but Caesar. We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which is in Hebrew Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, who are on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this title for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The chief priests of the Jews then said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom, so they said to one another, But let us cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. Let us not tear it, but let us cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments upon them, and for my clothing they cast lots. 
So the soldiers did this But standing by the cross of Jesus Were his mother And his mother's sister Mary The wife of Clophus And Mary Magdalene When Jesus saw his mother And the disciple whom he loved Standing he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to him. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said in fulfillment of Scripture, I toss. A bowl full of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of the vinegar on his son, and to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his Preparation in order to prevent the bodies from remaining on the cross on the Sabbath. For the Sabbath was a high day. The Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers Nicodemus 
my dear brothers and sisters, Irish rock band, you too, were performing a concert in Arizona on the 4th of April. The lead singer Bono had shut his eyes as he sang the song Pride in the name of love. The lead singer Bono had shut his eyes because he was terrified. He was afraid. Because a few days before, he had got a phone call during their practice. And if you sing this particular song, Pride, in the name of love at your rock concert on the 4th of April, you will be shot dead. When he went to the police, the police said that they could not help, they could not do anything. That time there was no metal detectors and nothing they would find. They could not find a way, so they told them either to cancel the program or not to sing this particular song, Pride. He was singing this song because 4th of April, the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. And this particular song, Pride, he had based on this person, Martin Luther King Jr. And in that fright, as he shut down his eyes at the last song, as he sung this song, he was afraid as he was singing. He was singing to himself, this is it. This is the last song, last rock concert that I am performing today. This is the end of me. Anytime the bullet will come right into me and I will die. As he came towards the end of the song, my dear brothers and sisters, he took a little courage to open his eyes. And when he opened his eyes, he was surprised to see the bass guitarist of the band, Adam Clayton, standing right there in front of him. He was standing in such a way that if a bullet was to come from the crowd, it would hit the bass guitarist Adam Clayton first and then it would hit the singer. My dear brothers and sisters, the sacrifice that Adam Clayton, the bass guitarist, was ready to make for his band member who was singing the song because they were all like a family together. Similarly, my dear brothers and sisters, we see today in a similar incident, Jesus, Jesus over there, he stood between us and between sin, sin who was, which was targeting us, the evil one. The difference being there, the bullet was not shot, but here the cross came in form of a bullet. Jesus embraced the cross and in a way he saved us. He saved us. And today, my dear brothers and sisters, on this Good Friday present over here, I would like to stress on four points. Not one, two, three and four, but A, B, C and D. Each depicting the events that took place after the Last Supper. The Last Supper where he's called his disciples to love, which you see on the backdrop of today. It was also yesterday called to love. And today's theme also is called to die. And we begin from where we end, ended our service yesterday. A. Agony in the garden. The agony that Jesus faced in the garden of Gethsemane. In the Gospel of Mark chapter 14 verses 32 to 42 we read about the agony in the garden. My dear brothers and sisters, in the book by Robert Coleman, 
it tells a story about a little boy a boy who need a little boy and a sister little boy named was Johnny and his sister Jane Jane required blood transfusion she had a rare blood type you see and she shared this particular red the blood group only with her brother and her brother few years before had gone through the same treatment because he had the same disease and he was healed and so the doctors thought by taking the brother's blood the sister would be healed so the doctor told the little boy that to save your sister we will have to do a blood transfusion we will have to take some blood from you on hearing this little boy Johnny he was a little bit scared he thought what will happen but then he said anything for my little sister anything for my sister Jane and he was ready so John Johnny and Jane both of them were taken into the hospital room and as he lay on the bed over the hospital bed looking at his sister he had a smile on his face and slowly my dear brothers and sisters as he looked also at the blood that was going out of his body into the pipe plastic pipe that was attached to him slowly he got tired he could feel weakness creeping within himself he pulled the apron of the doctor who was standing nearby he told doctor when will I die my dear brothers and sisters Johnny thought by giving his blood to his sister meant giving up his life yet because of his great love for his sister he was ready and prepared to pay the price Similarly, my dear brothers and sisters, we Jesus also, we see Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. He was over there. He was very anxious. He knows what is going to come. Not that he can see the future or he can predict the future. He's anxious like anyone. He was human being like you and me. He was anxious of what will happen, of the results of his actions. He had stood up for the truth, spoken the truth. And in his anxiousness, in the agony, in the garden, my dear brothers and sisters, there at the garden of Gethsemane, what did he do? What does Jesus do over there? He does not go and take a pill. He does not get over drunk by wine or alcohol. He does not go over there, smoke a cigar or a cigarette to relieve of his tension. Neither he did he start speaking about it, started gossiping about it. But rather, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus went into prayer. And here we see the challenge of prayer. He prays to his father, Father, take this cup away from me. Father, take this cup away from me. Jesus wants to live. He does not want to die. But then he continues praying. Yet not my will, but yours be done. At times, my dear brothers and sisters, we ask the question, God is not answering my prayers. I'm praying day and night. We go through the agony in our lives. <coughs> like Johnny we think that we are going to die. But my dear brothers and sisters, God has purpose in each one of our lives. All we have to do is say like Jesus, not my will, but yours be done and surrender ourselves to God and trust and have faith that as God gave strength to Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, he will also give us strength. After A, my dear brothers and sisters, after the agony that Jesus faced in the garden, comes B. 
he is betrayed by the disciples psalm 55 it says it is not an enemy who taunts me i could bear that it is not my foe who arrogantly insults me i could have hidden from there instead it is you my equal my companion and close friend what good fellowship we once enjoyed as we walked together in the house of god betrayal my dear brothers and sisters by a friend or a family member produces a feeling of worthlessness within us because we have trusted this untrustworthy person it gives rise to anger depression it raises this question about our own judgments also in betrayal my dear brothers and sisters this person knew the situation that i was in this person knew what i was going through yet he or she betrayed me jesus also my dear brothers and sisters faced betrayal all the disciples ran away they told before jesus they told wherever you go we will come but when he was caught everybody ran away his beloved disciple peter whom jesus said you are the rock he denied jesus judas jesus jesus shared bread with him ate in the same plate judas was made the head financer of the group but judas went ahead and betrayed jesus handed him over to the authorities to the officials my dear brothers and sisters many of us have gone also through a particular situation in our lives of betrayal people have betrayed us those who are close to us they have betrayed us and it has hurt us the most we cannot rid ourselves my dear brothers and sisters of these negative emotions but we can keep in mind that revenge is not productive at all revenge only kills us from within but forgiveness my dear brothers and sisters forgiveness in the new testament in greek forgiveness is to let go not necessarily a change of emotion you will never trust that person again who has betrayed you but my dear brothers and sisters at least we can let go of such an experience to move beyond our betrayal to trust in god you know in the bible beside jesus was betrayed we also have another example of a person who was betrayed by his own joseph joseph was betrayed by his own brothers but joseph was helped by god because joseph trusted god and god elevated him so that he could bring goodwill to the whole world only with forgiveness we read in the scripture that joseph experience or joseph as well as his brothers both of them experience peace and so my dear brothers and sisters we pray today help me lord to let go of the hurts that have come my way after a and b now c c depicts my dear brothers and sisters the crucifixion of jesus Eli Wiesel, a Nobel Prize winner and a survivor of the concentration camp, writes a book, Night. And in this book, in this book, my dear brothers and sisters, he writes about a small boy, a small boy at the concentration camp, concentration camp, who was hanged along with other prisoners. As this small boy, he climbs up. the gallows yes sense the gallows over there he looked very pale very thin a sad eyed person climbing up over there and all the prisoners were made to be over there and to experience this particular hanging of the boy along with the other prisoners and eli wiesel was also present at that moment over there and at the concentration camp my dear brothers and sisters it is not like in a minute the person dies like we see on 
movies on television, movies, serials, within a minute, your neck is broken and a person dies. No, but in a concentration camp, they were hanged. They had to suffer over there until they died. And all the prisoners who were standing over there were forced to look into the faces of these people who were being hanged and struggling to their death. And as Eli Wiesel stood over there among the other prisoners, the person, the prisoner behind him kept on saying, Where is God? Where is He? Where is God? Where is He? It took about half an hour to 45 minutes. That boy struggled before he died. It was very painful for them to see this. So Eli Wiesel also started asking the same question within himself. Where is God? Where is He? And as he repeatedly asked this question within himself, in a faint voice, he heard her voice. And that voice said, Here He is, hanging here on the same gallows. Here He is, hanging here on the same gallows. My dear brothers and sisters, today we see Jesus on the cross over here. Everybody, everybody just wanted to kill Jesus. The Jewish people were trying to find an accusation against him. But he could not. Pilate also found no wrong with him, but the people shouted. Jesus, as he looked everywhere, looking at this crowd of people, just imagine, everybody wants your death. There was no one to support him. And he stood alone. And even on the cross, when he was nailed to the cross over there, he suffered. He knew that human beings could be ungrateful. He looked towards his father, his father in heaven. He looked over there. The father who had given him courage at the time of his baptism. The father who had spoken also at the time of his transfiguration. But here, even his father was not intervening. Even his father was silent. And so Jesus cries out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Let us go back, my dear brothers and sisters, to the time where we have felt despaired, where we have felt abandoned. Let's go back to the time when we have losing faith or maybe even lost faith. Times when we ask God, where are you in this troubled situation of mine? Jesus, my dear brothers and sisters, felt the same. He was with us, hanging on the cross, hanging on the gallows, along with us. The final point, my dear brothers and sisters, D, death and burial. Two events followed his death. The Gospel of Mark says, first, the veil of the temple was torn in two, and second, a centurion, centurion, a non-believer, says truly, this is the Son of God. The death of Jesus, my dear brothers and sisters, was the turning point in the history of humankind. The cross, the instrument of sacrifice, the sign of torture, because the Romans used to crucify people on crosses, people who would rebel against them, criminals. But Jesus turned the sign into a sign of salvation. And Jesus calls us, as he said before, if anyone wants to follow me, let him renounce himself, carry his cross, and follow me. Jesus also went to the same and he invites us, his disciples, to follow him. In a short while, my dear brothers and sisters, now we will be having the veneration of the cross. A very touching moment in this today's service, where all of us, both young, old, 
children, parents, grandparents, all of our presence over here will come forward, venerate the cross. Some of us will touch the cross, take a kiss. Some of us will go and take a kiss, kiss the cross. And in this situation, my dear brothers and sisters, some of us may even bow down gently before we reach over there. A very sensitive moments where we tell Jesus how much we love him. And a march from our seats where we are sitting to the cross which we will venerate in a short while. The march, this is like a march of life. There are some among us present over here. A couple maybe who has fallen out of love. They are struggling to get their marriage back into love. But love back into their marriage. They are praying that they may discover their love again. Or there are some of us struggling with our faith over here. Maybe someone who has been abused and praying for strength to overcome the guilt, the embarrassment, as well as for the abuser. Some students over here praying for the exams, praying for the results. Weak students praying for God to give them the wisdom, the knowledge so that they can work better. Some of us struggling in life as we approach, my dear brothers and sisters, the crucifix which we will venerate. As we carry the cross, let us remember that Jesus is with us. He is hanging on the cross, hanging on the gallows as we are. With agony, betrayal, crucifixion and death. But my dear brothers and sisters, after D comes a E. Death is not the end. And for us, the E comes in Easter. has reconciled us with the Father and with one another. Through Jesus now, we can confidently place our petitions and needs before the Father as his sons and daughters. We will first say the invitation in which the intention is expressed. We will pray for a while in silence. And this will be followed by the priest who says the prayer. Our response at the end will be Amen. Kindly stand. We shall pray for the Holy Church. Let us pray, dear beloved, for the Holy Church of God. Let our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world. And grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty. We shall pray in silence. Almighty ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout the whole world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name to Christ our Lord. Now we shall pray for our Pope. Let us pray also for our Most Holy Father, Pope Francis. Let our God and Lord who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed 
for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by you, their Maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith to Christ our Lord. Thirdly, we shall pray for all orders and degree of the faithful. Let us pray also for our bishop, Oswald Gracious, for all bishops, priests and deacons of the church and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty ever living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, you are a humble prayer for your ministers that by the gifts of your grace all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Now we shall pray for catechumens. Let us pray also for our catechumens that are God and Lord. We open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sin, to the water of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. <laughs> Almighty ever living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, Increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens that reborn in the font of baptism. They may be added to the number of your adopted children through Christ our Lord. Fifthly, we shall pray for the unity of Christians. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth, to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in a bond of charity to Christ our Lord. We shall pray for the Jewish people. Let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayer, prayers of your church, that a people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption, to Christ our Lord. We pray now for those who do not believe in Christ. Let us also pray for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Almighty ever living God, grant that those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth and that we ourselves being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully 
the mystery of your life may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world through Christ our Lord. We pray for those who do not believe in God. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God. That's following what is right in sincerity of heart. They may find the way to God himself. Almighty ever loving God who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest. Grant we pray that despite every harmful obstacle all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and a witness of the good works done by those who believe in you so that in gladness confess you the one true God and father of our human race to Christ our Lord. We pray for those in public office. Let us pray also for those in public office that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace and freedom of religion, may through your gift be made secure to Christ our Lord. Finally, we pray for those in tribulation. Let us pray, dear beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the time. Almighty ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice, because in the hour of need, your mercy was at hand to Christ our Lord. Part 2 the Adoration of the Holy Cross. We now come to the second part of the service, the Veneration of the Cross. The Cross, which is a reminder of God's infinite love for us, will now be brought to the altar and unveiled. We venerate the Cross together, followed by individual veneration. During this time, the reproaches will be sung. Listen carefully and let the words and their significance touch you deeply. As we proceed, showing reverence to the cross, the instrument of our redemption, we pray to Christ, our Redeemer. Can we make this veneration our public act of faith and also an act of intimate thanksgiving to Jesus, our Savior?
behold, behold the wood of the cross on which hung the Saviour of the world. Oh, come, oh, come, oh, come, oh, come and worship the Lord. Oh, come, let us worship the Lord. Oh, come, oh, come, oh, come, oh, come and worship the Lord. Oh, come, let us worship the Behold, behold, the foot of the cross on which hung the Saviour of the world. Oh, come, oh, come, oh, come, oh, come and worship the Lord. Oh, come, let us worship the Lord. Oh, come, oh, come. Behold, behold, the wood of the cross on which hung the Saviour of the world. Oh, come, oh, come, oh, come, oh, come and worship the Lord. Oh, come, let us worship the Lord. Oh, come, oh, come. Riley, join the choir in singing the reproaches.
Check. Can you join us in singing Kartyan Samukha?
And formed by divine teaching, we dare to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. But deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shed down the high road, but only save the world, and my soul shall be saved. Holy Communion that is, the body and blood of Christ, will now be distributed. Holy Communion is reserved only for Catholics. We appreciate the presence of people of other faiths. However, kindly do not come forward to receive Holy Communion. Abhi pavitra Christ sharir paanta jayega. Christ sharir keval Catholic logon ke liye hai, jinhone Catholic Church mein baptism liya hai. अन्य धर्मीय लोगों का हम स्वागत करते हैं परंतु वे क्रिस्त शरीर स्वीकारने के लिए आगे न बढ़ें वे अपनी जगह पर बैठे रहें और प्रार्थना करें यह नम्र विनती है आता पवित्र क्रिस्त शरीर वाटना देता है क्रिस्त शरीर फक्त कैथलिक लोकांसाठी आहे जानी कैथलिक चर्च मध्ये बाप्तिस्म घेतले आहे अक्रिस्ती लोकांचे स्वागत आहे परंतु कृपया क्रिस्त शरीर स्वीकारायला पुढे येऊ नये आपल्या जागेवर बसून प्रार्थना करावी ही नम्र विनंती फॉर होली कम्युनियन प्लीज स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द फ्रंट रो काइंडली फॉलो द इंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ दी आशर्स
check. Can you join us in singing Disha Disha Tum Yeshu Bahatu? Thank you. 
Almighty, ever-loving God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you, to Christ our Lord. Mass will be at 7.30 p.m. Please bring a candle along. Today, after the final prayer, we shall depart in silence. Tomorrow, the veneration of the body of Jesus will be in the church from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Today, we have commem commemorated the loving sacrifice of Jesus for all humankind. We look forward to celebrating tomorrow the gift of new life as sons and daughters of God. The Easter Vigil service is the most important service of the liturgical year. We will meet again to actively and consciously participate in the Easter Vigil service. Bow your heads for the blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son. In the hope of their resurrection, may pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord.
were created in God's love and only the supreme sacrifice of his son Jesus could atone people's sin. Jesus, King of Kings and Lord of Lords hung on the cross. Did he deserve to die such a shameful death? After the death of Jesus, Joseph of Arimathea gets permission from Pilate to bring down the body of Jesus. Nicodemus and some of his faithful followers go with Jesus of Arimathea, taking with them linen cloth, spices, a mixture of myrrh and aloes. Two disciples climb the ladders and tie it to the cross. The disciples gently remove the crown of thorns which had pierced the head of Jesus.
One disciple lovingly wipes the face of Jesus and displays the blood-stained cloth. A cloth is wrapped around the body of Jesus to help lower the body from the cross.
the hammer, they removed the nails which had dri driven into his arms and feet.
the body of Jesus is slowly brought down. body is placed on a bed of flowers to be taken to the tomb. Struggling through my life and the choices I have made Looking to the right and left, trying to find my way Coming to a crossroad where I caught a glimpse of Him The Savior reaching out
Alicia Cardos, your mom is waiting for you at the at the stage. You're requested to be here. Alisa Cardos.
Oh, my.